Welcome to Keep Heading East, a whistle-stop tour of global feasting. I'm Murray from the YC Cookery School, and if you're joining us again, then welcome back. If you're joining us for the first time in this series, then you've joined us in San Sebastian, for us the food capital of Spain, and the third stop on our global tour of feasting. You can check out the main introduction for this video series by clicking the on-screen link below, and in the description there's also a link for our free PDF cookbook with all of the dishes to come out of our own kitchen and in this series. If you prefer a hardback copy, then there's a link there as well. So let's get into it. San Sebastian is a small town in the Basque Country, in the north coast of Spain, very close to the French border. Everything about this place screams eat, drink and be merry. It's a hell of a tourist trap and for those that have been lucky enough to visit, you can't help but want to return at some point and relive the experience. It's that good. With pride running high in the locals' blood and so much competition for trade and the food on offer is surprisingly good value for the quality. We've had some long afternoons and evenings touring the Pincho bars, been really well fed and watered. By the end of the evening, still come away with change from a 50. Now being a coastal town, seafood features really highly on the list, but there's also some fantastic meat from beef, pork, lots of duck, foie gras, game, etc. Every cut of meat, from the prime cuts to the cheap cuts, are utilized really well, and the wonderful slow cooking pork bellies, chorizos, black puddings, are often as good as the fillet steak and the foie gras. For me, the pincho bars that are in the heart of the city and in the old town are much better than any tapas restaurant that I've eaten in anywhere else in Spain. It's an interesting etiquette to get used to when you first arrive and um, kind of to prove that you aren't an ignorant tourist and that you know the deal. Firstly, as you approach the huge colorful buffet of cold pinchos laid out along the bar, don't be tempted to fill a plate, even if you're offered one. Walk up to the bar, pick up the item that you want and get stuck in. The pincho lean is this kind of strange yoga stance that involves bending forward from the waist like this, holding your hand out like this, and trying to eat so that you don't get anything on your shirt. It doesn't matter if you spill it all over the floor, just take a serviette off the bar, wipe your face, and throw it on the floor to mop up all the mess. It's a pretty common, it's a pretty common tradition there. It's actually a sign of a good pincho bar if you walk in and the floor is covered in rubbish as it's a kind of a sign that uh, the food is worth eating. Now pincho bars are renowned for their specialities. Okay, and the idea is that you go in for the speciality, you have one or two of the specialities, glass of wine, and then, and then you move on to the next bar. Instead of sitting down filling a plate and, and, and having a whole meal of it. Order your drink from the bar and any hot um, or made to order pinchos that you might fancy from the list and then just carry on with your conversation. Once you've had enough to eat, you ask for contour Mercedes, which is the Basque for the, the bill please, as opposed to the Spanish phrase la cuenta. The Basques are very passionate about the Basque language and they're very, very quick to point out that Spanish isn't the main language in the Basque country. The barman will have kept a note of everything that you've had, amazingly. And honesty and integrity and family pride is really important in the Basque culture. It's incredibly insulting to leave without paying or to pay for less than you owe. And we've been to San Sebastian a few times. And each time we visit, we head out on a guided walking tour of the Pincho Bars with a guy called Keith. He also does tours of the, the Cedarias as well. Um, it's the best way to navigate your way through the endless options and really seek out the best places to eat, the things that are worth seeing and the things that aren't. It doesn't cost very much and, and it's, you get really, really great local knowledge. He knows a lot about the local history and the customs and it's a great way to make the most of your time, especially if you're only there for a short time. So if you find yourself in San Sebastian, which I sincerely hope you do at some point, then look him up. His name's Keith from San Sebastian Walking Tours. Now for me, one of the highlights of being in San Sebastian is always the foie gras, which is everywhere in this neck of the woods. From seared raw foie to the terrines and the pâtés, it's all there, it's great value for money and it's really high quality. Now foie gras is a wonderful product, but it always opens a bit of a can of worms from the bad press that the farming methods have had um, over, over the years. 
So for those of you that are completely against eating foie gras, for what you assume is a horrendous industry, I'd like you to consider an angle from Kenji Lopez, who's written a great article about his experience with foie gras farms in the US. Now his main argument is that you can't judge a whole industry based on the worst farms. And if that was the case, the pork industry, the beef industry, the chicken industry should all be held more accountable um, than actually the foie gras industry. And that media representation can often be quite misleading. We're all quite happy to eat cheap bacon, which involves one of the least humane farming practices um, imaginable. Anyway, I've left the link in the description below so you can have a read of it and make up your own mind. But it really is quite, does make for quite interesting reading. Now, as in Portugal, bacalao is dried salt cod and a staple in this neck of the woods. One of my favorite pinchos in San Sebastian would have to be Brig de Bacalao. It's a whole phyllo wrapped fish cake pie thing and it's full of flavor. Now I've included the recipe for Brig de Bacalao in the Keep Heading East cookbook. It's a recipe from a really simple little pincho bar called Heiser and that's their speciality. The other recipe in the book this week is a slow cooked octopus dish with Basque spices, chorizo and potatoes. The octopus is either cooked sous vide, if you can, or steamed for a few hours to make it really tender and then it's refried just before you want to eat it. It's incredibly tender, a lovely thing to eat. So next time you see an octopus on the fish counter, pluck up the courage, pick it up and take one home and have a, have a crack. Now there are two video links at the end of this video. One is a general overview of San Sebastian by Lonely Planet. It's a very quick clip and just gives you a good impression of, of the town, the old town and what to expect. And the second brings me to a, another great institution in the Basque country, the Cideria or the Cider House. And this video gives you a, a really good sort of rundown on how these places work. If you're planning a trip to San Sebastian, make sure you leave yourself a minimum of two or three days. One for a cideria, where you go and have a, a huge meal, drink loads of, of live cider. Another whole day and a night to lose yourself in the old town, gorging on pinchos and the local taculi, the, the white wine. And if you can stretch to a day on the beach, it's a lovely beach. Follow it up with an upmarket evening in one of San Sebastian's 18 Michelin star hotels. For me, that would be a long weekend that you'll never forget. So that's it for this stop on our Keep Heading East Tour of Global Cuisine. I hope you've enjoyed it. Links are on screen now for the videos I mentioned earlier if you'd like to see a little more from the region. And remember, for our subscribers, there's a fantastic cookbook to accompany this series. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe and grab yourself a free PDF copy of our cookbook. Or if you prefer a hard copy, the links are there as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon.